Hi, I'm Jim and welcome to my review of Dark Sword Armory's two-handed Templar Sword. Now, the first thing that I have to say, I must be obligated to say, about this sword is that while holding it, it's like literally, almost literally holding a piece of history. You see, it was modeled after an oak shot type 13A that was found in the Thames and dates to the early 14th century. Now, luckily for us history buffs, Aeol and the people at Dark Sword seem to be nearly obsessed with recreating historical swords as closely as possible to the originals. And in fact, here's a photo of the original, which you can find on Dark Sword's website. Notice the, uh, the pommel, the blade shape and taper, and the cross guard. Uh, all are nearly identical to Dark Sword's recreation. Now, as, uh, as many of you may already know, uh, Templar swords, many Templar swords, were uh, destroyed or thrown into rivers <coughs> following the dissolution of the order uh, in the year 1312. Uh, now, because it's such a wonderful replica, and not to be overly dramatic, but while holding the sword, you can almost imagine and feel what it was like to be a Templar. And then having it wrenched from your hands after that papal decree, and then watching in horror as it was unceremoniously tossed, you know, into that London River. Uh, you see, a Templar sword wasn't merely a sword for a knight of that order. The, uh, the crucifix form uh, um, was a symbol of their faith, and uh, having had it blessed during the knighting ceremony, and being of so fine a weight and balance, that it could be wielded, you know, almost nearly without effort, it was almost literally an extension of themselves. The Templars believed that every thrust and swing was an affirmation of God's might. You know, so regardless of your religion or lack thereof, you simply have to appreciate the Templars' passion and devotion. <clears throat> now, as far as the sword's characteristics, it's, it's 45 inches long, has a blade length of about 36 inches, and it weighs about 3 pounds, 4 ounces. Um, it also has a point of balance of about six inches from the guard, and the, uh, it's also peened, meaning that the, the sword's tang here, um, the, the, the part that runs through the grip, uh, was actually hammered over the pommel. <clears throat> now, like the original that it was modeled from, the, uh, the pommel has an engraved cross pate here, that you can see. Uh, this was typical for not only Templar swords at the time, but for those of the Hospitallers and other orders. Now, as you can see from the guy beside me here, George is just dying to get his hands on this little beauty. No, George, you cannot hold it. You remember what happened the last time, right? Total carnage. Crusaders, right? <laughs> so, now you might ask, what's so great about two-handed sword? I mean... It's heavier, and it's probably harder to wield than a one-handed sword, isn't it? Well, as armor changed throughout the centuries, swords had to adapt to get through it. One-handed swords, uh, like this one up here, were essentially useless against late 13th and 14th century transitional period armor. Chainmail became stronger, like this here, wedge riveted versus round. Uh, brigandines were more common, and early plate armor came into existence. But the two-handed sword, like this one, or the great sword, as it was sometimes called, uh, was the answer. It had a longer reach, of course, but could also better cut through or pierce armor um, because you had more power with two hands. Uh, and speaking of hands, another thing I have to mention is the, the leather-wrapped wood grip. Um, I'll give you a close-up of that. So it tapers from the guard of the pommel. Uh, which aids maneuverability, and the leather over the textured wood adds a soft but, but solid feel. Now, when ordering, the sword has a few options. The first is that it comes with either a scabbard or a scabbard with a French tie sword belt. Uh, both are leather wrapped over wood. Um, now, since my sword does little more than hang on the wall, I opted for the scabbard only. I mean, to be honest, I, I don't know about where you live, but people tend to be hmm, a little taken aback when they see someone walking around with an almost four-foot sword strapped to their waist. Now, should you offer the belt, I do have a couple of other scabbards uh, from Dark Sword that I can show you. Um, 
Oh, they also come with this little handy card to show you how to tie one. Now, one scabbard is uh, modeled by George here. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, the other, this one here, came from a 12th century Templar sword, which is up there over George's head. Um, another option is to order the sword with blunt or sharpened edges. Uh, I went with sharpened because, let's face it, uh, a blunt sword is essentially useless, right? Um, I mean, is an unsharpened sword even a sword? I mean, one could argue that it's a little more than a long and flat club, you know, sort of bop someone on the head. Um, but anyway, when considering the steel that Dark Sword uses, you're going to want sharpened edges. Uh, the blade is made from 5160 high carbon steel, which is exceptionally tough and resilient. Um, it, it keeps its edge very well. Uh, now, thanks to some of the other alloying elements and to dual tempering, the sword also springs back to shape uh, after flexing. Uh, you can see that. Urgh. All right, it's probably not very smart to do. Um, so without that flex, the blade would just shatter on impact with another sword or armor, um, which is you know, not good for swords. Um, now, for those of you that may be unfamiliar with the AISI numbers, the 5 and 5160 means that the major alloying element is chromium to prevent rust, though only 1% by mass. Uh, that's the 1 after the 5. Uh, that means that even though the blade is super durable, it's prone to rust and should be wiped down with some oil every now and again, even if it just hangs on your wall, like mine do. Uh, that, I guess, about wraps up my review of Dark Sword Armory's Two-Handed Templar Sword. If you're a fan of history and would like an authentic Crusader-era Crusader replica, sorry, uh, or if you just want to own a really well-made and beautiful two-handed sword, then I would definitely recommend getting one. Just be sure to keep it out of the hands of your resident Crusader Knight. That's all I've got. Thanks for watching. Bye.